Um, we've been looking at grace or favour, the favour of God. Favour, uh, as we've seen the last uh, couple of weeks, favour is the supernatural advantage in life. Favour is the divine advantage. God's favour, God's grace, and of course grace uh, means unmerited favour, favour you did not deserve. In other words, God preferring you when you didn't deserve it. And the Bible says that we are saved by that. We are saved by God's grace, saved by his favour. Okay? In other words, God decided by his sovereign choice to favour us and show us grace. And why would he do that? Well, it's not really hard to work out why he would do that. It's not really a mystery because we had no other option. God could not save us by our righteousness or our right standing because we didn't have any. We were in Adam. We were in the nature of Adam, which was satanic. Uh, Adamic nature is satanic. So um, to, to be outside of Christ is to have a, a sin nature. We, and those of us who get saved, we, we had that sin nature. And we couldn't get rid of it. We couldn't, um, you know, you could give all the money you wanted to Oxfam. You could help old ladies across the road. You could do all the good deeds you could. But that would not save you because all our righteousness is filthy rags in the sight of the Lord. So God made a decision that he was going to show us grace or favor. He was going to, to show us his kindness and his mercy and his love. And of course, that word grace covers that. But I like to use the word favor because I think some of us understand favor um, sometimes a wee bit more than we understand the word grace. Grace has got a kind of, uh, you know, it, it has a religious sound to it at times. But we all understand what favor is because, you know, we all understand what it is to be the favorite. David, Rachel, and Hannah always call themselves the favorite child. Amen. So they're, they're vying for the favour. Um, but for God to show us his favour makes us part of the favourite tribe. Okay, We've all, we all know the tribe of the Bible, the Amalekites, the Hittites, uh, the Jebusites and so on. But isn't it good to be a favourite of God? Anyway, so uh, let's turn to... Well, let me, I just want to point this out to you in Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 16, let's go there. We saw this last week. We sort of closed with this last week. We saw that God's word was a favor word because the Bible says, I commend you to the word of his grace, to the word of his favor. You know, people will not read the Bible because they think it condemns them. They are condemned. Or oh, the Bible says that I am a sinner that I am condemned. Well, the Bible doesn't say that you're condemned. It's a, it's a favor word. Okay? Yes, we're all sinners in the sense that we were all born in Adam. But God's favor will make you, take you, and give you a new nature. A new, you will be a new creation in Christ. So that's favor. So it's not a word of condemnation. Yeah, you can read the Bible, uh, things in the Bible that make you feel guilty, but they're supposed to point you to salvation. Amen? So God's word is a grace word, it's a favor word. And then we saw, and that's what we're looking at here in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, God's throne is a favor throne. A lot of people don't like prayer. When I say don't like prayer, they're scared to approach God. Well, you know, he knows what I did in 1984 and he, he knows what I did and the thoughts I was having earlier in the week. And so people, when they feel guilty and condemned, they won't approach God. But folks, look what it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly, not timidly, not with trepidation, not in fear. Let us therefore come boldly. Why? To the throne of grace. God's throne is a throne of grace. So that means where God is, because he's seated on the throne, correct? He's seated in heavenly places. He's seated in heaven. He that sitteth in the heavens, the Bible tells us. So he's on his throne. And I like that old song we always sing. 
God is still on the throne. Amen. Because God is on his throne, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne, which means come to him. Come boldly to him because where he is seated is not a throne of condemnation and pointing out your and, and fault finding and pointing a finger at you and critical of you. It's a throne of favor. It's a throne of grace. It's a throne where God says, when you come to me, what can I do for you? See, God is in the business of showing us grace. God is in the business of showing us favor. God is in the business of blessing you. Now, I like to put it this way. See, God, the Bible tells us he doesn't sleep. But I always say that if, if, if he went to sleep, when he woke up in the morning, the first thought in his mind would be, how can I bless my child today? Because that's God's heart. God's heart is to engulf us and drown us in blessing because the throne that he sits on is a throne of grace, a throne of mercy. So let me just say this. If you've messed up, if you've done, you know, you've been silly or, or you've been wicked, run to the throne, not from the throne. Because it's a throne of favor. And he'll cleanse you and he will restore you because the throne he, the very throne he sits on is founded upon grace and mercy and love and truth, of course. He says, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, the throne of favor, that we may obtain mercy and find favor, find grace to help in time of need. Let me ask you a question. Do you have need this day in this place? It might be a health need. It might be a financial need. It might be a relationship need. It might be a... A mental health need. Whatever the need is, then you will find it at God's throne. Because that's where you find grace. That's where you find favor. And God's favor is designed to put you over in life and give you the divine supernatural advantage. You know, men might call you, sorry, men might show you favor. And it's a wonderful thing when they do. But when God shows you favor, and he shows you favor in the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you want to know the grace of God, the favor of God, then have a relationship with Jesus. It's that simple. Amen. You don't have to go to uh, Bible college. You don't have to go to seminary. Um, or, or you, you, know, you don't have to do a thousand good deeds to put in your account. Jesus Christ has already settled your debt by his favor. Amen? So there is no debt if you will receive the payment in full that was made on the cross by Jesus. And to enter a relationship with God, just say, I stand ready to receive the favor payment that Jesus made for me. Amen? So let's turn to Ephesians. Before we go to Romans, let's turn to Ephesians um, chapter 1. You know, I'll say this, I think I said it last week, or the week before. If all I ever did to, for the rest of my days was preach the favour of God, then I'd be happy. Because let me, let me just point this out to you. Some of us are big on the Reformation, when the church was reformed. Well, Luther, Calvin, these men, that's what they preached, the faith of God and the grace of God, because by grace are you saved through faith. And folks, that, that's not everything, but it's certainly enough to focus on grace and faith, isn't it? Because you don't have access to God with those things, as we'll see. Ephesians chapter 1, just want to point some things out to you. It says here, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, Paul like to start by saying, God's favor be to you. The grace of God be to you. And you and I need that favor, need that grace coming to us, don't we? There is no other way. Religion will not do it for you. Religion will not make you right with God. Religion will not earn God's approval. And religion is where you think that your good deeds will outweigh your bad deeds and you'll have access to God uh, when you die. Okay, or even in this life. But folks, the entryway 
There's a neon sign. And it's grace that's the sign. Okay? It's not religion. So if you see two doors before you, well, I've become religious. And let me just say this to you. The Reformation was about coming out of the Catholic religion. Okay? But Protestants do a very good job of making religious ways to God. Amen? So, but the only way to God is the path of grace, the path of favor, to receive what Jesus has done for us, not focus on what we can do for him. Amen? Some people like to impress you by telling you how much they love the Lord or try to demonstrate to you how much they love the Lord. But I'm not impressed by that. I'm certainly not impressed by my own endeavors and I'm not impressed by anyone else's. But I am impressed by how much Jesus loves me. Amen. I'm impressed by how much the Bible says that he loved us. You know, he loved us when we were his enemies. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So that table that we celebrate every Lord's Day, folks, that's the love of God. Demonstrated. And that someone who could have ignored our plight didn't do so but decided that any punishment due, any penalty to be paid, any debt to be settled, he took it upon him by grace. The decision was made by grace. I will show them mercy. I will show them kindness. I will show them love. I will show them favor. You see, people say, well, you know, and a lot of us fall into that trap. We try to earn God's favor. We try to earn his approval. Well, folks, you can't earn it. I was sharing with someone the other night, and um, he, like me, <laughs> had uh, a colourful past. Amen. And before we, 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 we got, well, in my case, um, uh, when I was backslidden many, many years ago. And, you know, I said this at the time, I to this chap, I said, I feel a wee bit sorry for people who've, who've had goody two-shoes lives, who've never really, because you can't drink of the depths of grace and mercy unless you've been in a place where you really need it. Amen? So if you're sitting there today, and you're, you're, oh, you don't know what I've done, Pastor. Well, let me just say this to you. I don't deserve God's mercy. I don't deserve his love. Let me just say this to you. That the less you deserve it, the more you qualify for his grace. Amen? The more you qualify. for That's why we call people trophies of grace. That's why we like to hear all these testimonies that people give. You know, oh, I was a gangster. I killed 50 people. And, you know, I was this. I was a bank robber. We like to hear testimonies like that, don't we? But let me just say this to you. Regardless of how colorful your past was, the grace and mercy of God is extended toward you and I. Amen. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And God, it says here, wants us to come to the knowledge, the saving knowledge of his truth. So it says here, grace be to you and peace from God the Father, God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Then it says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, I, 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 I made a decision this week. And the decision I made was that the older I get, the more I go on in life, the more I am going to be blessed and favoured of God. Amen. Amen. You can make that decision regardless of what age you are tonight or today. Amen. Even if you're a, you're a, a, a young a young nipper, even wee David, um, or whether you're, uh, I'm not going to say, whether you're older, shall I say? more advanced in years, that every day from now on you're going to be more blessed and favoured. Now, why can you say that? Uh, how dare you say that? Well, I, I dare to say it because God's word tells me it's available to me. Amen? He's already said, and it's past tense, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us already, past tense, with every spiritual blessing that is available in heavenly places in Christ. And really what that means is every blessing you can walk in and it's stored in heavenly realms so that the devil can't steal it from you. 
Okay, and that includes health, it includes healing, it includes provision, it includes blessing in in your relationships. Every single thing that you could possibly need or require from now till the end of your days, he's already provided. He is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. He is Jehovah Rapha, your healer. He is your righteousness. And then it says, verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him. Did you know you were chosen? This is sovereign grace we're talking about. Chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. And then it goes on to say, uh, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his what? His grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Folks, grace is foundational. The favor of God is fundamental and foundational. It is the starting point. You see, you can't come into God's presence. You can't enter uh, the new creation life. You can't uh, become a Christian and bypass the grace of God. It's the very starting point of your relationship with him. It's foundational. Three vital things that you and I need are all covered in these first few verses. First of all, blessing. Well, he says you're already blessed. The grace of God, the favor of God. Well, he says it's all according to that. And of course, love. You're accepted what? In the beloved. So you're already uh, richly blessed. You're already highly favored. And you're already super abundantly loved. Isn't that good news? That is our condition before him. And you know, let me just say this to you. In verse 3 where it says, He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Sorry, in verse 6 where it says, We are made accepted in the beloved. That word accepted in the Greek is the Greek word charitu. When what it means is highly favored. You're highly favored in the beloved. You're highly favored and covered by the love of God. Isn't that good news? Amen? You know, you can go to church this morning where you get bad news. Amen? A lot of churches preach some bad news. Jesus says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news to the poor. Well, let me say this to you. If the gospel you're hearing leaves you poor, that isn't good news. That's not the gospel. And poor isn't just about financially poor then it means every single one you you can have. And let me just say this to you. There's nobody more poor than somebody with loads of money but doesn't know Jesus. You can gain the whole world, Jesus says, but lose your own soul. If you lose your own soul, then you are the most impoverished of humans. Amen? Only a relationship with God through Jesus, by the favor of God, by the grace of God, only that is, can enrich you and make you rich. And of course, financial wealth, financial blessing, financial prosperity, it's all part of it, but it's not all of it. Amen? Some people think, say, well, I'm going to believe that prosperity message because I need some money. Well, that's good, but that's a very basic way of looking at things. God wants to prosper you, but the Bible says, as your soul prospers. As the inner man prospers. How does the inner man prosper? Well, you get saved. You come to know Jesus. Amen. Then you begin a relationship with him, which is based on the favor of God. Now let's turn to Romans chapter 5, which was our reading today. And we are going there now in the time we've got left. In the next uh, hour and 45 minutes. (laughs) Romans chapter 5. I'm kidding, folks. It's only an hour and a half today. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Justified by faith means being made righteous by faith. To be justified is to be made righteous. And righteousness is not, especially in the New Testament, righteousness is not all about conduct. 
There is a conduct which is righteous, of course. Doing the right thing, living the right way, living a clean life, living a holy life, living a righteous life. But righteousness is a standing. Righteousness is a condition. Righteousness is a realm that God gives to you, imparts to you, and imputes to you so that when you become a believer in Christ, you don't ever become more righteous than the minute you got saved. Because righteousness... You, you, you can do more right things and live more righteously, but righteousness is what God gives to us when we receive Christ. Justified by faith means being made righteous by faith. It means coming into right standing. Uh, well, what does that mean? It's an old-fashioned term, but what it means, if you're in right standing with someone, you know, let's just put it this way, if you're a British citizen then you're, and, and you're not a, a criminal, you're not in the prison, then you're in right standing with, with the British state, the British government. Amen? You, 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 you pay your council tax and, you, you know, uh, you're in right standing. But if you're an illegal immigrant in Britain, you're not in right standing with the British government. Does that make sense? Or um, if you have been somewhere and they've kicked you out because of bad behaviour, you're not in right standing with that place. Amen? You know, if you try to shoplift in a store and they catch you, they'll say, don't ever come back here. Why? You've lost right standing here. So right standing is a condition, it's a state, it's a realm, and, it, and, it, and when it says you're justified by faith, it means we've come into right standing with God, i.e. God is holding nothing against us. Amen? So we're in right standing with him. You're in God's presence and you don't feel condemnation. You don't feel guilt. You don't feel, because God is not holding anything against us. Faith brings us into right standing and favour with God. We are justified by faith. We are made righteous by faith. Faith is the agency. Faith is the vehicle that brings us into right standing and favour with him. Then verse 2. Look at this. By whom, but the whom of course being the Lord Jesus Christ, also we have access. We have access by faith. You know, uh, Rachel started a, a new job this week, just voluntary. But one of the first things that they did was give her a lanyard. So what does the lanyard do? If you and I walked into the store, now we have access in the store, don't we? Because the doors are open and you're allowed in, you have access. But we don't have access to the till. We don't have access to where the staff are. Because you need, that's a different type of access. And you have that by your lan lanyard. Lanyard, not lanyard. Lanyard. But the Bible tells us we have access. Access where? Into this grace. Becoming a believer in Christ gives you access to a place, to a realm, to a, to, a, to a level, if you like, where God's favor is functioning in you, for you, abounding toward you. It's a place that you have access to by faith. We have access, i.e., and this is what it means. Uh, I read this, that, that this word access. It means being ushered into the presence chamber of the king. Amen. Imagine you went down to Buckingham Palace uh, because you were getting your MBE, your OBE, and you know, whatever. And you need access. You and I can't just go down and say, you know, I'm here to see the king. I'm here to see King Charles. And they said, you have an invitation? No. Well, you don't have access. But if you're invited down because you get an award or an invitation for some reason, then you have access into the presence chamber of the king. I like going to these old castles, Stirling and Edinburgh, and they, they show you that this is, this is where the king or the queen would meet people. It's the presence chamber. So if you were summoned or you wanted to meet the, the monarch, then there's a presence chamber. There's a room set aside, uh, a throne room sometimes, or just an access room. But let me just say this. The king or the queen will probably always be seated. Why? Because... That's their job, is to be seated. And you get access to the presence chamber. Well, let me just say this to you. We don't just have 
access as visitation rights. We don't have visitation rights to the throne room of God. Why? The Bible says we're seated with him. Which means it's not visitation rights, it's habitation rights. Amen? You ought not, I'm going to go and visit the Lord Jesus in the throne room today. Well, folks, I'll be looking forward to you coming because I'm hab- that's my habitation. And it ought to be yours too. Man is the dwelling place of God. But let me just say this to you. Jesus Christ is the dwelling place of all those who have access by favor. The Bible says it over and over. We're in Christ. We're in him. And it says he's in us. Amen. It's called quantum entanglement to give it the physics term. Anyway, so we have access into the presence chamber of the king. Let me just finish with what I've got here. Now, I want to point this out to you. Let me just read this verse to you. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Something that really struck me was this, that the the verb here, have, we have access, and the verb stand, they're both perfect tense in the Greek. Now, what does that mean? The perfect tense means this. It means that we have perpetual access and favour. In other words, it's already been settled and the access, it's not a case of, well, if you don't have your lanyard, you don't get in. No, you get in because you have permanent, perpetual access and perpetual favour. You don't lose access and you don't lose favour. And you you think of that term, once saved, always saved. I think... It's really referring to this. Well, who would want out anyway once you've been given access and favour? We have perpetual access and favour. Now, let me just say this to you, and this is something that might shock you, but it shows you how much religion has entered into some people's thinking. You cannot fall out of grace. You cannot fall out of favour with God. Well, you don't know what I did. I backslid and I did this and I did that. Well, folks... That doesn't change your right standing with God. I I lost my righteousness. Impossible. You can't lose your righteousness. You can't lose access. You can't lose the grace of God, the favour of God. You cannot fill out a favour with God. You can lose fellowship. You could say, well, I I backslid. I I wasn't praying the Lord, you know. But let me say this to you. If you fall away from fellowship with him, You're the one that did that. If you step out of fellowship, it'll be you that does it, not the Lord. Because he says, it's already here. And that's why when we go back, the Lord, you know, he receives us because he's already granted us access. He's already given us his grace. So if you're backslidden today, then just go back. Amen? Reverse the drifting away and go straight into the throne room and say, I'm back. Don't come timidly, come boldly. Amen? So anyway, it's important to understand that being in the grace of God, being in his favour, and we need to point this out, it doesn't mean you're free to sin. doesn't mean that your sin is condoned or overlooked. Or, it's all right, don't worry. Now, there were people around in Paul's day saying, well, if we've got grace, if we've got favour, we can, we can live how we like. No, folks, here's the thing. Sin is not licensed because you're under grace. In other words, you do what I want. No. And I want to point this out to you. Grace will keep you from sin. Grace will empower you not to sin. Grace will defeat the inclination and temptation uh, and and all the desires to sin. It'll it'll destroy those desires if you keep walking in the favour of God. Grace will empower you, equip you and enable you. Well, I've, uh, I've preached myself happy, so I hope you're happy too. Well, we're going to leave it there for now. We will come back to this subject. It's such a vital subject. I'm looking forward to preaching on the favour of God that makes you rich. And, and the favour of God you have to know and the favour that abounds you. But I'm not going to get into that today. We'll leave it there for now. The Lord bless you, folks.